Hi, I'm Esty. And I'm Becca. <sighs> and I'm Alan. And we're your hosts for Hawaiian Electric's What Happens When video series. In What Happens When, we take a look at questions our customers ask us. About electricity, electrical safety, and energy savings. So, Alan, what's with the getup? Well, Esty, that's because we're here at the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. And today, we're going to be talking about emergency preparedness. And I wanted to be prepared. So anyways, today we're talking about what happens when hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis hit. Let's go, I love road trips. I love road trips. Welcome. Um, my name is Vic Gustafson. I'm the Operations Chief here at Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. Uh, thank you for coming today and giving us the opportunity to show you around our emergency operating center. And by the way, you don't need to wear your hat now. We can. Uh, do that, there's nothing going to fall off the ceiling. Okay? So this is our state warning point. This is our 24-7 operations for Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. We're looking out, uh, where's the next disaster going to happen? We look at open source information from uh, print media to media from Fox, CNN News. We can look at the California Integrated Seismic Network. We can look at this and say, red, an earthquake has happened within the last 60 minutes. After an hour, it turns to blue, it's blue for a day, and then it turns to yellow and it stays there for a week. The bigger the box, the bigger the earthquake. During hurricane season, we're watching the tropical storms develop. You can see the development of the disturbance, and we can track it across. When it gets to the 140 degree longitude, that's when we really start reacting with our state agencies and partners with the counties and start holding conference calls and what we need to do to respond to the hurricane. Okay, so that's what they monitor to do what they need to for that. We have technology to lean ahead and get ahead of the situation to make sure the counties are aware because it's the counties responsible to activate the sirens, do the warning, do the evacuations uh, for their jurisdictions. Welcome, this is our control point, or as we call it here in the uh, Hawaii Emergency Management, this is the dais area, basically because it's raised levels up. This is where our emergency response teams or our state emergency response teams come and activate uh, for any type of disaster. So what you have here is I have four county desks and these individuals basically are looking and coordinating with each of the counties, Maui County, City and County, Honolulu, Kauai County, Hawaii County. And we have an emergency software package that they can send us requests for assistance. Well, aloha and welcome to uh, Berkheimer Tuttle. Uh, this, this is the headquarters for Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. I'm Vern Miyagi. I'm the administrator for Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. I'd like you to intru introduce Toby Claremont. He's the deputy. He's the executive officer for, for our organization also. Thank you so much, Vern. Thank you, Toby, for having us here. What we really wanted to know is what happens when a hurricane, an earthquake, or a tsunami was to actually hit our islands? The primary thing is the safety of the people. Uh, we have to inform the people through messaging of what to do, where to go, how to protect yourselves as the storm comes by. And as it hits, the, our main primary goal on this is lack of casualties. Mm. No casualties or minimal casualties. The damage is from structures is going to be there. And after that, it's a response. So Hurricane Iniki, we learned a lot. We know the process. And after us, it's FEMA, the Federal, Aid, Federal uh, Emergency Management Agency. So when we run out of resources, we're already coordinating with them. Mm. When it comes to earthquakes and tsunamis, it's a little bit different. Like you know, earthquakes, there's no season, there's no warning. Right. It's going to happen, so we have to be prepared. But earthquake, it's really a response after. There's no way you can really prepare for it other than if you have some small shocks first, and then you got to get ready for the aftershocks. Now, tsunamis is something else. There's two types for us. One is the distant tsunami. It gives us, I think, Peru, Chile gives us about 14 hours. Uh, Alaska is the one that scares us. It gives us only about four and a half or three hours, uh, four to four and a half hours between sh earthquake and arrival time. Uh, for tsunamis, the critical thing is evacuation because there's going to be damage. Uh, but we want to evacuate the people there so that there's no casualties. Mm -hmm. Local earthquakes, uh, you might not have, you're not going to hear sirens. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to happen. So the automatic reaction should be if there's an earthquake right offshore and you're on the shore, just get to Malka, get to high ground as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. The most important part is the communication and relationships with the counties so that I understand what they're going to ask for and we understand what we have to provide. Well, in addition to what uh, Vern shared with you about, you know, hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis, there are a lot of other hazards that we prepare for and we respond to, including things like lava flows, 
Um, and more recently, we've had to deal with the dengue uh, mosquito-borne outbreak that occurred on the Big Island. So my role with the Hawaii EMA Advisory Council is to be a resource to both the governor as well as to the director of Hawaii Emergency Management uh, on matters of emergency response. Uh, it can be anything from you know, defense of the state from an attack, it could be a man-made uh, cyber event, or it could be a natural disaster of some kind. Over the years, the uh, working with each other, um, having meetings together, you know, me serving on the advisory council, they've all helped to, one, first build relationships uh, between the two organizations. We now know so much better what each other does, what they need, so that when we have uh, uh, some kind of event, unfortunate event, whatever it may be, um, we know already that they're going to want us to be there. To, be a to have a liaison there to communicate with them. We know their protocol, their process that they go through to make sure that the governor and or in right now Major General Logan is aware of what's going on for, for protection or for security for the entire state. And we, knew, we know what we need to provide to them in forms of information or data to support their work. Um, so it's really improved the, um, the working relationship, just having that the, those closer relationships and therefore a better understanding of what each other does. Mahalo to the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency for helping us understand what happens when hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis hit. So gang, do you know what this episode's safety message is? Sure, that one's easy. Be prepared. There are many things you can do right now to prepare your family and business for emergencies. Remember, not only are we entering Hawaii's hurricane season, but earthquakes and tsunamis have no season. They can happen at any time throughout the year. A great way to start your emergency preparedness planning is by downloading our free Handbook for Emergency Preparedness, available on all three of our websites. The handbook includes a section on electrical safety, important reference information, emergency preparedness checklist, tips for pet owners, and even a sample menu for your emergency food supply. It's available in several different languages, including English, Cantonese, Ilocano, Korean, and Vietnamese. And again, it's all free. Before we go, we wanted to wish a valued member of our What Happens When crew a fond aloha. Yes, Harry, our videographer, is retiring after 25 years of service to Hawaiian Electric. Mahalo for everything, Harry, and we're going to miss you, buddy. Miss you guys, too. <laughs> oh.